Good evening. I hope you've had a great day. God has been truly good to us today. We thank him for his goodness and for his mercy and for his grace. He has been good to Pastor Slater. I hope he has been as good to you as you have to him. Now you think of what I just said. Has God, have you been as good to God as God has been to you today? He has blessed me beyond abundance. I would have to say, ouch, when it comes to that. Actually, God is always better to you and I than we are to him. We have a lot to pray about tonight. Remember Harry John's in prayer. He's still in South Shore Hospital. Remember Amanda Ringo. I spoke with Mike just prior to coming on this afternoon. Hi, Orville. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Sh How are we doing? I pray for... Hi, Carl. I'm going to quit looking at the bottom. Hi, Sandy. And I forget what I'm talking about. But Amanda's going in to have uh, a C-section between 7 and 8 tonight. So pray for them. They're at the hospital right now as we speak, and we pray that everything would go good. Pray for Sister Bias's son, Kevin. He is still in the hospital at Oakwood, still on the ventilator. Spoke with Sister Bias this morning. Spoke with uh, um, Karen, Sister Russ's, I mean, Sister Irene's daughter, Karen, this morning, and Sister Irene really needs our prayers. So pray about that. Remember Jack and Glenda Ruffner in prayer? Continue to pray for them. Pray for our nation. Folks, if we ever needed God in our lives, we need him today. If we ever needed God to move and help us, it is the day and age that we live in. We need God to help us today. Pastor's looking today at everything that's going on in the world. And people are discouraged. But I know that God has the answer for all things. Tonight, I want to pick the name Counselor, the mighty name of Jesus, Counselor. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings of life that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, help our minds to be straight tonight. Help us to be focused upon what you've called us to do. Be with Brother Harry tonight. God, I pray you would touch him as only you can. Be with Jack and Glenda Ruffner this afternoon. God, would you touch them uh, as only you can. I pray for all of our people that are struggling during this difficult times uh, that we live in. Be with Sister Bias' son, Kevin. Lord, touch him, God. Help him to get off the ventilator very quick. Be with my friend John up north. God, I pray you would touch him and his entire family. Lord, I pray for those today that are struggling spiritually. Lord, our nation needs a spiritual awakening. Lord, I pray that you move and wake up America today. Help us, oh God, to realize that you are in control. Lord, I know that you're about to show this world that you are God and that you thunder and that you are still in control. We love you and praise you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray and amen. Last night I talked about the name Wonderful from Isaiah, and I'll read it again. It's real quick, and that way, if you weren't with us last night, you will understand. I'm going to look at all the names leading up to Christmas that Isaiah talked about uh, uh, Jesus. And he said, For unto us a child is born, unto us is given a son, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of peace. Tonight we want to look at the word counselor, and I believe that he is the great counselor. Today and last night as I studied, I thank God for his wisdom and knowledge and what God can do when we don't realize how good he is. Usually way a birth is announced after, but Isaiah announced the birth of Jesus before he ever was and before he was ever born. Isaiah prophesied of the coming king and what he would be able to do and how he was coming to save you and I. Think about this. His name shall be called Counselor. As a counselor comes available. Think about this. A counselor, he become available. Think about that. Available. The name counselor speaks of wisdom. Wisdom. Okay? When is wisdom worthless? When is it worthless? Listen real careful. Wisdom is worthless 
when it is not available. When it is not available. When it cannot apply it to life. In other words, all the wisdom and counsel in the world is no good if it's never applied. But listen to this. Jesus is available. He became available in Philippians 2 and 5. He became available in Philippians 2, 5, 6, and 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be made equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. He became available for you and I. He became obedient under the heavenly Father. He came off the throne and came and was obedient under the commandments of the heavenly Father that he may bless you and I. Think about that. He came to the manger in Luke chapter 2 in verses 1 and 7. Think about it. He came to the manger for you and I. A lot of times Christmas comes around and people don't realize what Christmas is all about. But it's about the Savior and how he came uh, into this world. And listen to what it said. He came in the manger and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Taxed was first made known when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, under Judah, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the end. He became available for you and I, but we are never available for him. He came uh, that you and I could have life and have it more abundant. He was available and he came to be available. Listen, his birth announced to the shepherds in Luke 8, between 2, 8 and through 14, that they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings, of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they shall be signs unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. I love this part here. And suddenly there was with them the angels, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all men. Boy, think about that. He became available to everybody. He started with the shepherd. I don't understand that, but he became the chief shepherd. He said, I am. David said, he is my shepherd. I'm so glad tonight that he is my shepherd. I'm glad tonight to know that I belong to him and I am his. Think about this. Jesus, the wise men came in Matthew 2, 1 through 11. I'm not going to read all that. But the wise men came because he was available to be worshipped. Jesus was also available during his ministry. He didn't hide himself from anyone. He was available. Listen, available to the children as well as the adults. He was available to the rich and the poor. He was available to sinners like you and I. He didn't shun anybody. He was available. That's because he was the great counselor. He was there. Secondly, he had the answers. As counselor, he come without answers. Answers for the doctors in the temple. At the age of 12, and you'll find it in Luke 2, 41 through 52. 
They went up to Jerusalem at the time to pay taxes and a sacrifice. And all of a sudden, Jesus is missing. They find him in a temple, and he's teaching the doctors and the scribes. And they were astonished uh, at his doctrine uh, and how much wisdom and knowledge that he had. He answered Nicodemus, the rule of the Jews, his question in John chapter 3. And Nicodemus come and said, I know that thou art a teacher, and no one can do the things that thou do. And Nicodemus didn't understand who he was. But Jesus had the answers to set him straight. He said, thou must be born again. Thou must be born again. Jesus had the answers. He's available to answer sinners like you and me. He answers our question. Think about that. He answers the question for the critics in John 2 and 18. When they criticized him and and talked about him, he had the answers for them. He had the answers for an empty tomb. Listen, he had the promise of heaven in John chapter 14. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. He had the answers. I'm going to go away and prepare a place and come again and receive you unto myself. He had the answers for a place called hell in Luke 16, 19, and 31. He said, in hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Jesus said, there's a heaven in my father's house. There's a hell prepared for the Satan and his demons and for those of the children of disobedience. He had the answer. He was available and he had the answer. Third and final thing, as a counselor, he come with assurance, assurance for hopeless sinners like you and I. I was on my way to a devil's hell with no hope, no way of redeeming myself back to God. God could have passed judgment up on this old boy, and I could have went to hell. But praise be to God, he, Jesus was available, he had the answers, and he had the assurance of salvation. He brought the message of love. Jesus said, I come with love. No greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Listen, why much love did he have? He loved me enough to die upon an old rugged cross that you and I both could have life and have it more abundant. Love, love for the woman at the well in John chapter 4. She was not a nice woman. But Jesus loved her just the same. Same as you and I were not nice until we come to know Jesus. He loved crooked Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was crooked. He cheated people. He stole from people. But Jesus showed up one day. Zacchaeus wanted to know Jesus. Jesus come to the sycamore tree in Luke 19, 1 through 10. And Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. And Zacchaeus come down and Jesus told him, Everything about him. And Zacchaeus said here, how you know he got right with God? Because he confessed his sin. He said, Lord, I restore, according to the law, four times what I've taken. He was willing to give it all up because he had met the king of kings. Love for a dying thief on a cross in Luke 23, 39, and 43. The thief on the cross, wow, he had, he had assurance of heaven. The thief said, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. And Jesus looked over to the thief and said these words, This day shall thou be with me in paradise. I don't know if that ain't enough to make you shout. I don't know what is. One day I knelt down at an old-fashioned altar, and I said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And just like that, He came into my life. He was available. He had the answers, and he showed me how to be saved. He took his abode uh, up in my life. He took away the sin uh, and the darkness uh, and everything that was no good and washed me, as Isaiah said. Oh, listen, he washed me with the blood, and I became as white as snow. All my sins uh, were forgiven. Uh, Why? Because Jesus knew that I needed a Savior. Jesus brought hope to those who had no hope. I had no hope. 
Jesus brought me hope. I went down a sinner, got up a child of God. I came into church that morning with no hope, not knowing what tomorrow holds. But boy, let me tell you what. When I left that Sunday morning, uh, the grass never looked as green, the sky never looked as blue, and the sun never shined as bright. Listen, I felt like I was walking uh, on the clouds. Uh, nothing worried me. Nothing bothered me. I had no hope. But boy, Praise God, I got hope after I met the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Counselor was available that morning, and the Holy Spirit saved my life. Listen, no problem was too difficult for him to solve. Listen, no matter how bad my life was, Jesus straightened me out. Praise be to God. Listen, to he still reaches to those who have no hope. He ain't changed. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Jesus said, I don't change. Uh, the world changes, people change, uh, but the word of God will stand uh, when the world's on fire. Folks, we need to wake up today and realize Jesus is in control. Listen, he offers hope for you and me. Listen, no matter what the world says, look up. Thy redemption draweth nigh. We may not be here tomorrow. We could be walking down the streets of go because Jesus said, I'm coming back. He made us that promise. He said, if I go away, I'll come again. He don't lie. God cannot lie. Jesus never lied. He told us the truth. He said, I love you unconditional. I love you. Ain't that great? The great God that you and I serve today, he loves us unconditional. I thank him for his goodness and mercy and grace. I am so great. By the grace of God, I am here today. By the grace and mercy of Almighty God, I am here. He's available. He has the answers and he has the assurance of salvation. Ain't that awesome tonight? What a counselor. Counselor means wisdom, but listen, it's worthless if it's not available. But Jesus was available. He is always available. Here's one of the things Pastor's going to say to you in closing. 24-7, whenever you need him, just bow down and call upon his name, and he's there. Don't forget, Brother Charlie, he'll be back on tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Singing, doing a fantastic job, Charlie. Your voice sounded stronger this morning, but still pretty raspy. We're praying that God give you strength to get through these difficult times that lie ahead. Tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock, Brother Michael Ringel. If you're not friends with him, go on Facebook, Mike Ringel, Michael Ringel, and send him a friend request. And we come in there. He is teaching on Wednesday night. Does a fantastic job. Pastor will be back on Thursday morning. Charlie will be back on at 10. And I'll be back on Thursday night uh, at 7 o'clock. And I'm not for sure. Uh, i got to look and see what the next one is. I'll start studying uh, tonight for it. And what is it? Counselor, the mighty God. Wow! If I ever miss one, it wouldn't be Thursday night. The mighty God. Man, I can't wait myself on that one. The mighty God. We serve an awesome God. Can you imagine the mighty God? Can you imagine? Woo! Go on. Woo! As Connie said, woo woo for Jesus. I am looking forward to seeing uh, you tomorrow morning with Brother Charlie at 10 o'clock. Don't forget to pray for Amanda tonight. She's probably in surgery right now. Mike will call me as soon as it's over, and uh, we'll try to put it on uh, Facebook and try to get it out, And uh, but continue to pray. We love you. May God bless you until tomorrow morning with Charlie. Pastor's going to say good night and good evening.